Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Um, just got word or noticed online that uh, Moscow, Russia has been attacked. Uh, some symphony, some big building. Um, it's about 140, 647 injuries. Several dozen people have been killed. Um, the, the, I mean, it's a terrorist attack of some sort. Uh, ISIS is claiming uh, that they did this, but... Um, I mean, I think most of us, most of you would would say that CIA is, that, that ISIS is in the CIA's back pocket, basically. Uh, so, connections there. Uh, did they just do this on their own? Hmm? It was only two weeks ago that the State Department said that they uh, had heard that there were going to be some kind of terrorist attack in Moscow and was warning any Americans that might be there that they should leave. Um Already, um, Russia has fired back saying if they find out that, that Ukraine and its leaderships was involved in any way, that they will destroy them all. They will kill all of the leaders. They will, it, it's, it's full on scale war. Now, remember that just, I believe it was yesterday, the Kremlin said that they are at a full war with, with Ukraine and NATO. Um, not, not a, not a, 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 action, a, a whatever special, whatever they've been calling it. Of course, they haven't declared war, so it's they've just called it a special security action or something like that. Well, now they're saying that, that it's full on-scale war. And then now this has happened. So um, are we going to see an escalation? I, um, in the last, like, I think I said this yesterday too, or maybe it was this morning, in the last 24, 48 hours, I've uh, gotten a lot of information from various people. Who knows? Some of it may not be ex ex accurate, but I, some of it comes from sources that I'm very confident that it's accurate. And uh, we're seeing just increased activity everywhere. Um, it's like it's we're, we're just right on the edge. It was just a couple of days ago that um, the DOD... I can't remember. I don't remember if it was the joint, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, but one of the top-ranking generals, admirals. I, I don't remember. Uh, said that he was he was kind of explaining, talking about you know what's going on in Ukraine and with NATO and Russia and everyone and us, and he he likened it to the beginning of World War II. Um, he said it's 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 just like the, the beginning of World War II kind of insinuating that World War III is, is beginning. I, I really, I know that many of you have grown tired of this and some of you are still in the mindset that nothing's going to happen there. And you could be right. It's possible that you'll be right. But everything is looking like that that's not going to be the case, that things are going to pop off really quick or, or, or really big. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I just got done fighting a four-hour wildland fire. I'll tell you about it here in just a second. So I took in a little too much smoke and ash. So I'm a little a little congested and everything. I haven't cleaned my nose and stuff out. Uh, just literally got done. Um, so yeah, I think that I think that this is gonna be another turning point, an inflection point, or, or whatever you want to call it. And I'm not t picking sides at all. This, this, it's just, it is what it is. Um, and there's video of it. And it looks pretty horrific. There's, there's, you know, these are civilians. They're saying there's a lot of children. Um, there's some kind of symphony, orchestra, something, you know, play, whatever, you know, big, big auditorium. And there's just, you can see bodies all over the place and uh, in the footage and stuff. So yeah, it's. I think that I think we're going to see a turn, and. I'm not making a prediction. Please, let me just stop for just a second. I am not making a prediction. But I have a gut feeling that it's a good chance that things are going to dramatically escalate or take a different turn by the end of this month, uh, by the 1st of April. Maybe by the 1st of April, maybe nothing more will happen. Maybe it'll just be the same thing that's been going on. But I think that we're, we're that close. So you need to be getting ready. Uh, in other news, <clears throat> I did. I just got done fighting a f almost four-hour uh, fire. Um, 
on a very large several thousand acre uh, piece of property. Uh, the, the fire wasn't several thousand acres. The fire was several dozen acres. Um, it was very rugged. My goodness, it took us, once we got off of the road onto the property, it took us a, at least 20 minutes of driving through the property to get to it. That's how big the place was. And it was, the drive was extremely rugged. The walk, the fight, it was it was just rugged. When we got done, we were all just beat. And the, the fire itself was not terribly intense, um, but it had gotten out of control and moved on to some other property. And, and so we were, anyways. So to change the subject slightly, talking about this fire, I know that some of you have gotten tired uh, of the fire department emergency response team, blah, blah, blah. You don't understand it. You think it's silly. I, I, some of you think that I'm making this up. I get text messages and emails and everything from people uh, that, that think this is the dumbest thing, that think that we should just be going out there all the time with guns and only training in that way. Uh, and I have nothing against that because I do that. But this is additional training because we're, we're learning how to respond very quickly to people around here. We're building relationships and connections and uh, relationships with, with authorities in the area, all kinds of stuff. I don't want to go into all the details because the point that I'm getting to is that <clears throat> we don't know how things are going to turn out. Right. We don't know that that we will actually have to use lethal force to protect ourselves. I mean, it's certainly starting to look more and more likely. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not downplaying it. It definitely is looking more and more likely, but we don't exactly know. But the kind of stuff that I dealt with today, especially for you homesteaders that have property, the, the medical calls, the just going in and assisting people, helping. These are the kind of things that we that happens all the time. They're going to happen still once everything falls apart and depending on where you live the, the type of services that would respond may not be there they may be overwhelmed they may not be able to come um and i want to ask you do you have a plan for that do you have a plan for when your property catches on fire do you have a plan for when your child becomes seriously injured you know falls breaks a leg um has a serious wound or, or something like that um do you have a do you have a plan when there's a, a, a serious medical that's not accidental, maybe a heart attack, a stroke, um, anything like that? Do you, do you have a plan for that? Because those kind of things happen all the time. And especially for those of you that are kind of the homestead living out in the country, if if you're if you get to where you're really living off of the land where it's it's, you know, grid goes down or there's some type of attack or there's something and you're kind of on your own, you're going to be doing more things, more physical labor, labor, being out more, using tools more, because you're, you know, you're, you're really, you're, you're kind of roughing it, right? So it increases the probability that you get injured more. Um, you may not have the medical care that you're used to, so it increases the possibility of you becoming sick, ill more. Um, all of these things, and you better have a plan on how to, to get through them. I mean, you should have a plan also for defending yourself, defending your property, protecting what you have. I mean, it doesn't do any good to have it and to put all the, the effort into gardens and everything else if you don't know how to defend it. You 100% need to do that. It's why you should also be part of some type of tribe, community, mag, crew, whatever you want to call it, um, so that you can defend things together. But there's more to it than that. You you have to be able to take care of the other emergencies, the, the, the emergencies that already happen on a daily basis. So there's a really a greater chance that they're going to happen to you because they already do happen. You know, the, the, the combat defense stuff, probably, but we don't know for certain. And maybe not everywhere, right? But everywhere people get sick and injured and have medical problems and there's fires and accidents and all that kind of stuff. So you need to have a plan on how to handle all of those things. Because all of those types of emergencies can happen. Tornadoes, floods, ice storms, hurricanes, you know, whatever it is that's likely to happen in your area. What happens when they happen to you and there's no help that can come and help you? There, there's no emergency services. There's no, there's no insurance to rebuild. There's nothing. You're you're on your own. What what is your plan for that? 
Th this is the kind of stuff you need to be talking about with your family and with your little community because um, it, it's important. And I, I just, I think all the time a as I'm doing this more and more, what happens to the people when this type of service no longer exists? What are they going to do? What what happens, you know, if if these calls that I, I go on and other people go on with me, what happens if we don't show up, right? Someone's having a heart attack and they call 911 and no one shows up. What happens? Hmm? You know, your, your fields start catching on fire and they're moving towards your barn or your house. No one shows up. What happens? That's a very likely scenario in the future. And so you need to be prepared for that. Yes, this stuff going on in Russia, bad, bad, bad. Uh, stuff going on the border with Haiti, flights coming in, illegals tearing through the fence and overwhelming the you know National Guard. All that kind of stuff is bad. The U.S. dollar, the inflation, it's all bad. Election stuff going on, bad. It's, it's all, it all is. I mean, I could go on and on and on. There's, there's way more, of course. But I'm talking about things that actually happen right now directly to you. Not stuff that's going in another country or another state. I'm talking about things that happen right now. And when things fall apart, they're going to continue to happen to you. And you better have a plan and a way to, to take care of that now. If you're wanting more details over on Locals, I have been doing this. I have been talking much more detailed about medical gear, medical equipment, fire gear, emergency response equipment. I, I've talked at, at length many times about defense and things like that, the types of tools that you need to defend yourself. So you can go over there and you can watch that content. It's down in the description and in the comment section below. But... It, we're in that time period, folks. Just because you wake up now, you know, to this morning, tomorrow, maybe maybe Sunday, maybe you maybe we'll be lucky enough that you can make it all the way through the weekend and wake up into a fairly normal world, right? But I think most all of you know deep inside that that waking up to a somewhat normal world is is not going to be lasting very much longer. And whether it's some overnight big change or um, it's just a continual progressive worsening. Either way, um, it's going to get there, and you better be ready for it. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order and to prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.